Hey, Happy New Year, everybody. My name is Dwayne. I'm with Castles and Attics. And uh, let's see. Over the holidays, you get a lot of questions. Hey, do you watch that show, American Pickers? Yeah, I like that one. And the Pawn Stars. And what about Auction Hunters? Or do you see Storage Wars? And I always go, yeah, pretty cool, aren't they? And it's fun. We talk about the characters, the people, and the uh, pros and cons, which I might just do my own little uh, uh, breakdown what I think of each one of them. But for right now, I just wanted to share a little bit about what I think about storage auctions as a whole. And I'm no expert. Glendon is a far better expert on storage auctions than I am. But I do have 20 years uh, in the business off and on, 12 years for a living uh, buying and selling antiques and being an auctioneer. So I know a little bit about my industry. And uh, I've gone to a few storage auctions. actually used to help set up some of them. Uh, when you were allowed to actually pull the stuff out and sell people, sell to people. So, uh, yeah, I know a little bit about storage auctions, so I'm going to share with you uh, my thoughts real quick. Because someone wrote me and said, my husband's thinking of getting into these things. I read online, different places, people talking about them. Here's my two cents. These shows are going to change the industry pretty much the way the Antiques Roadshow changed PBS. Um, there are going to be a lot more people out there trying to find something, digging, trying to believe that they're going to find the Holy Grail buried within a storage locker. Um, you know, the Antiques Roadshow, what do they have, like five, 8,000 people go through in, the, in a weekend and you see an hour's worth of television twice out of a city? I mean, you only see a minimal point of a, a small percentage of what they really see. I mean, they say the, the number one thing they see are Bibles, old family Bibles. So, you don't always know what you're getting into. Storage lockers. Uh, here's the lot of reality. What are you going to do with a bunch of stuff when you buy the locker? Do you have an outlet for all those baby clothes you're going to haul out of there, or all the plastic cups, or the dirty couch, or the scrap metal, or the office chair? What are you going to do with it? Do you, do, you, I mean, do, you, do you have an outlet? Do you have a big garage? How quickly do you need your money back? Do you have some help? You know, there's a steel case desk buried in the back corner. They don't let you leave it. Um, you know, those are things you have to really consider. For myself, fortunately, I have a, a access to a truck. I have a van. Uh, I have somebody I'm partnering with right now. Joe, he's, he's been a lot of fun. He does his own thing. I do my thing. But if I need him, he's there. And, uh, you know, I have a way of dealing with uh, things. I work out of a garage and a storage locker. I mean... I don't have a large building now. I plan to get one here shortly. But have you thought about that? Let alone the education. I can go to a storage locker and stay there for two hours and not buy a thing and be really content. Can you? Can you afford to do that? Can you afford to not buy anything? Or can you afford to buy it all when you need to? And do you know the difference? Do you know what you're looking at? I mean, I don't know how to walk in and judge a house full of stuff in a locker if you want to see what's for sale out of a locker here in Indiana, just go to a local auction on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night. I can tell you that all stuff all came out of a local storage locker. Doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean people aren't making money. It just means they've learned how to make their money. Do you know how you're going to make your money? So, for me, storage lockers, man, get ready. Because I promise you, they're going to smell you when you walk in if you're a newbie. There are plenty of people there that know how to play their cards way better than you. You will pay. You will buy your education. They will see to it. And, and, and that's just a fact. If you're willing to pay the price to get into the game, to figure it out, go right ahead. Buy Glendon's books. Read his blogs. Be very, very valuable information. It will not stare you wrong. Uh, I haven't even read them, but I guarantee it. Anybody who's been in the business as long as he has and can write about it knows far more information than you do going in blind or blank. So, um, go have some fun. If you want to jump into the business, good luck to you. Uh, you won't be the first one. You won't be the last one. I hope you're very successful, but uh, you're not going to be the only new person standing in line. And you're not going to be the first person getting an education and somebody gladly willing to give you one that's going to cost your pocketbook. But... Uh, Till we meet again, keep a song in your heart.